For context, Linda says, we are a multi-specialty clinic. We would like to report on the emergency medicine MVP, for example, just to get our feet wet and report as a group to make sure that all of our specialties are included, as well as the emergency medicine physicians. To that end, my first question, Linda's first question is, if we do that, it is our understanding that CMS would use the higher of the two scores. However, does that mean that the entire group would get the higher of the two scores or just the emergency medicine physicians since they were included in both reporting options? And would the group just get the group score? Great question, Linda. It does seem a little unbelievable, but for the first three years of MVPs, your whole multi-specialty practice is eligible to get the quality score from a single specialty-specific MVP. It's not so unbelievable when you look at 16 years of quality reporting, first in the Physician Quality Reporting System, PQRS, and the Merit-Based Incentive Payment System, MIPS. Most multi-specialty groups, for as long as they've been able to, have been qualifying the entire practice on a set of primary care measures. Now you can do it on the specialty side. To do an MVP, you have to register for it before the end of November. You have to define your subgroup. For 2023, 24, and 25, the first three years of MVPs, your whole practice can be the subgroup, even if the measure does not apply to most of them. You can only do one MVP for subgroup, even if your subgroup is the entire practice. But you can do a traditional MIPS submission and your whole practice and your whole subgroup, which is your whole practice in this case, will benefit from the higher of the two scores. Great question, Linda. Her next question, Dr. Mingle, is would 50% of our group have to participate in any IAs or just 50% of the group, excluding the emergency medicine providers who would have their own separate IAs? Great question, Linda. For each submission, that is your traditional MIP submission and the MVP submission, 50% of the providers who stand to be scored on the submission will need to participate in the selected practice improvement activities. Since your whole group will be the subgroup, 50% of the whole group need to participate to get credit. Now, it should not be quite as hard as it might seem. My quick review of improvement activity choices show that they are generally broadly applicable. I'd want to do a focused review for any of our clients intending to do that to make sure that there are no surprises. The other thing to keep in mind is that it takes half as many improvement points for a full score in an MVP than it does for traditional MIPS. It needs some attention, but it should not be an extra burden to choose MVP-specific improvement activities that are applicable to your whole group while satisfying the MVP. Then you need one or two more, potentially, from the the whole menu of MIPS improvement activities to satisfy your traditional MIPS submission requirements. There'd be no penalty to choose all of your improvement activities for the bigger group from the MVP choices. Great question, Linda. Thanks a lot. Linda's third question is, are there any other reporting considerations that we should think of if we were to attempt this combination reporting? Linda, it's hard to be absolutely confident without knowing the unique attributes of your group. But I think it's pretty straightforward, and there are just a couple of other reminders I'd like to make. First, the registration window is expected to open yearly on April 1st and to close on November 30th. You have to register your subgroup and you have to register for the MVP that you uh, want to submit. If you want to do the CAPS survey, which is available in the emergency medicine MVP and three others, you have to register for both the MVP and the CAPS survey by June 30th. Once you've registered, Medicare has told me that you can still change your choices and abandon the CAP survey for the year, or choose a different MVP and use the CAP survey for it, if it is a choice for that MVP. You can make those changes 
any time prior to the end of the MVP registration deadline, November 30th. If you miss the June 30th deadline, you can't add the CAPS survey later. Now, from the context of your question, I think you already awa are aware that a subgroup can only do one MVP. It bears reminding everyone of that restriction. Until the eventual sunset of traditional MIPS, I expect that any subgroup you define and for whom you submit an MVP will get the better of the MVP submission score or versus the traditional MIPS submission score. That's all I can think of on the, off the top of my head, Linda. Good luck. And finally, Linda would like your input, Dr. Mingle, on a concern she has about MIPS value pathways in the future. She says, our practice includes 10 specialties. When traditional MIPS sunsets and MVP reporting in subgroups is mandatory, I am expecting an enormous burden to potentially report on 10 distinct MVPs, each having distinct and different quality measures and improvement activity choices. What are your thoughts? Linda, that's a real concern. The legislation that established the quality payment program demands an increase over time of the requirements. This is one of the ways that Medicare is implementing that requirement. There's also a submission requirement even to small and to solo practices, excepting the low volume threshold, of course. Medicare sees the relative burden on you to be no higher and potentially less than it is on those smaller practices. Looking ahead, I see a potential path in which all care is conceptualized in terms similar to inpatient diagnosis-related groups, or DRGs. Reimbursement for any DRG may be modified by your measured value in comparison to your peers. Your only option is to repeatedly give your input as comments every time CMS asks for them. Every proposed rule and most if not every final rule comes with a formal comment period. You're more likely to be successful at postponing the change or modifying the incremental uptick in burden, but ultimately I expect you will not be able to stop the burden from increasing. 